Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Duver, and I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering and Architectural Science, and I, it is my pleasure to welcome you to Alumni Week. I'm sure by now that you're tired of hearing it, but this past 18 months has really not been anything like we've experienced before. When I left my office on Friday, March the 13th, 2020, I, I would have never imagined that I wouldn't return until this September. We've all been challenged to embrace a new way of working and living. But in facing adversity together, we have shown courage and resilience that will help us build a better future. I am inspired and intrigued by the new opportunities we have and how they will impact the engineers and architects of the future. With this in mind, our faculty has taken time over the last year to refocus our plans responding to emerging trends in both our professional and personal lives. Now is the time for us to look to the future, and we are committed to creating a forward-thinking strategy centered on the most pressing challenges we face as a community. Equity and inclusion in the engineering profession, climate change and environmental stewardship, AI and cybersecurity, machine learning, and the future of industry. This afternoon, we will hear from faculty members, students, volunteers, and staff about how they have adapted and thrived during the pandemic, as well as their hopes for the future. While many of us have become used to working from home, over 75 research labs within the faculty have remained open and active, continuing their work or pivoting and adapting to provide real-world world solutions to our current situation. Earlier this year, we celebrated four new Canada Research Chairs. Dr. Reza Arani in Smart Grid Cyber-Physical Security, Dr. Ibrahim Bagheri in Software and Semantic Computing, Dr. Umberto Berardi in Building Science, and Dr. Anton de Ruter in Spacecraft Dynamics and Control. These prestigious awards solidify our faculty as a place of world-class research. Our faculty successes include Habiba Bugarara, whose laboratory of biomaterials and biomechanics is offering hope to patients needing replacement joints or bone implants by developing new materials which mimic bone and work with the body to extend the lifespan of an implant from 10 to 25 years. In 2009, doctors Bo Standish, Michael Lung, Adrian Miriam Pillai, and Victor Yang and his colleagues in electrical engineering founded 7D Surgical, a pioneer in the image-guided surgery market out of their research lab. Last year, demonstrating the potential of commercializing academic research, 7D was acquired by C-Spine Holdings Corporation, a global medical technology company focused on surgical solutions to treat spinal disorders. Finally, Jen MacArthur's Smart Buildings Research reached a national audience when her $6 million CFI award was highlighted by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Jen now joins us to tell us more. Hi, I'm Jen MacArthur. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Architectural Science. I've spent this last year on sabbatical at the University of Edinburgh, where they have a center for business, climate change, and sustainability, researching the green building movement, how it's evolved, and how it's continuing to adapt itself to address the new sustainability challenges that are presenting our built environment. Closer to home here at Ryerson, we're building a new lab that's going to support exactly that kind of work. The new Smart Campus Integration and Testing Hub is a brand new facility that's going to be constructed in 2022 and is going to be a showcase for post-2030 smart and sustainable construction. This is going to give us a new, a new opportunity to develop, test, and demonstrate the technologies that are going to bring us into the sustainable new future. I'm delighted to be part of the team of academics and industry partners that are bringing this together. Within the department, we've got some exciting things happening as well. This past year, we submitted a proposal for a brand new master's program in project management in the built environment. We're pending our final approvals and we're aiming for our, new, our first class to be coming in next September into this new program that's going to be looking at how we can adapt the very best of emerging technologies as well as our tried and true methods so that we can deliver projects 
as efficiently and as sustainably as possible. This is going to finally complete our graduate program in architectural science and support our colleagues as they develop better architecture and better building science. We can support them through better management of these projects. It's an exciting time to be at Ryerson and it's a really great time to be part of the team here. Thanks, Jen. Faculty successes drive our students to research further. However, this year, I was delighted to launch a new award, recognizing the exceptional work of our students outside of the classroom. These community leaders serve as an inspiration to us all. Community impact is an important element of the faculty's all-in approach, and we want to recognize our students who are making a difference in their communities. For our faculty, community impact is about supporting and empowering community members to amplify their voice and advance their own goals. With this in mind, I am proud to recognize and support our students who are committed to doing more in their communities. Hi, my name is Daniela. Uh, I'm a student in the Masters of Engineering and Computer Networks program. Hi, my name is Drew. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, or they, them and I am in computer engineering at Ryerson University. Hi everyone, my name is Gianluca Bazile, and I'm in my fourth year of mechanical engineering. Well, my name is Marwa Al-Sakar. I'm in the Department of Architectural Science, and I'm currently my co-op here, coming back this fall to finish off and graduate. Um, hi, my name is Noreen Kaur, and I'm going into my third year of computer engineering this fall. Hi everybody, my name is Ruth, and I just graduated from Ryerson's mechanical engineering undergraduate program. And winning it, it, it kind of demonstrates that or, or shows me that I am doing something for the community, that I, that what I do is important. Having a voice for the women in engineering community and being able to know that your voice is being heard and that your experiences are real and that there are other people who have gone through similar experiences, but also knowing that there is like help, there are resources that can help you continue to pursue your goals. I'm really committed to actively working towards like bringing, building and sharing these values and these communities that I've already found at Ryerson. Um, I'm, I'm committed to bringing them outside of Ryerson and in my workplace environment. So it just means welcoming marginalized and underrepresented folks into the industry. This means not being afraid to use these diverse perspectives to tackle some of those like grander challenges in society or those bigger problems that we want to solve. Because there's, there's so many ways that we don't realize we can help in the little or the big ways. And uh, for us, just even drawing for certain people is enough for them. And that's what they need that they can achieve. So uh, why not do it? And we have the time, we have the people who are passionate just as me to, to create that impact. So I'm, I'm grateful that I can find different ways as long as I have a community that I can um, connect to. So I'm currently the Ryerson Engineering Student Society President. So my goal this year for the society and myself is to continue to push the limits when it comes to students and what we're able to achieve. As we slowly return to campus, I'm excited for new events to take place. But in my heart, I also do want to push the Volkswagen Beetle one more time. So being a part of ENGO, I've, I've done a lot of different uh, things I wouldn't have done before, such as networking with a lot of different companies and also getting to know uh, a lot of students across Canada, not just Ryerson. And I, I definitely want to help continue to contribute to Ryerson by bringing in all those resources, such as contacts from different companies, bring them back to Ryerson in order to increase the opportunities that students have uh, on campus. These highlights are just the tip of the iceberg. As we celebrate everything we have achieved as a faculty, this summer we launched a new website to reconnect and engage with our alumni and friends. Alumna Christine Contos from the architecture class of 2019 is here to tell us more about the Discovery Program, a series of events, communications and volunteer opportunities to expand and strengthen our relationships beyond the campus. My name is Christine Contos, a 2019 FIAS alumna, here to speak to you today about all the exciting upcoming programs we have lined up for this academic year. To start us off, the Alumni in Residence Program, also known as AIR, is part of the FIAS PNP Program, Peer Network Program. AIR provides FIAS graduates, like myself, with an opportunity to share their knowledge, experience, and expertise to support students' personal, community, academic, and professional development. 
I'm looking forward to joining 17 other alumni and supporting students this, up this upcoming academic year. Another exciting program that we are launching this year is the Discovery Mentorship Program, DMP for short. This program is tailored specifically for the FIAS class of 2019, 2020, and 2021 who have been hit the hardest by the job market. The program will connect recent graduates with incredible C-suite level mentors who will be helping them overcome challenges and make informed career decisions. We look forward to sharing these mentor-mentee stories throughout the academic year. And now, a special message to our mentees from our mentor, Thomas Park, Vice President of BDC Capital at BDC. Hi everyone, my name is Tom Park. I lead the new BDC Deep Tech Fund, which is a new $200 million venture capital fund supporting great startups with breakthrough technologies. Listen, I just want to say congratulations to you all for participating in the Discovery Mentorship Program. Listen, it's been such a pleasure for me to be involved with the Ryerson Faculty of Engineering and Architectural Science. I'm a member of the uh, uh, advisory Council. I have a great time working with Tom, supporting you all. Uh, I, you know what, Some, one of my favorite things is meeting with all the students. So I'm really looking forward to getting to meet you all and to supporting you through this very difficult time. I do have one piece of advice as someone who's graduated in two different recessions. Uh, have hope, don't worry, things will work out. You may have to hustle a little bit more, but this is a great opportunity for you. And the fact that you're being, you're part of this program is a huge step up uh, on, on your way to where you wanna be next. So I'm looking forward to meeting you all shortly. Thank you. And finally, I want to introduce you to Hus Madavi, an RTA alumni, and he's here to tell you more about a powerful new lecture series that the faculty will be rolling out in the next few months. Hi, my name is Hus Madavji. I'm a proud graduate of the radio and television arts program class of, wow, 2000. Well, that's a sad fact. Well, here's an exciting fact. The Faculty of Engineering and Architectural Science is introducing the Discovery Series, where a community of innovative and curious minds will present, collaborate, and even provoke some interesting and inspiring conversations. And it's, it's pretty exciting, actually. Look, there's topics ranging from exploring the wild west of space to reimagining downtown Toronto's Young Street. Now, I feel very lucky to be hosting the first panel event called The Journey to Mars, with distinguished speakers like Canadian Space Agency's Joshua Kutrick and Sarah Graven from the Lincoln Alexander's Law School. And we're gonna confront the incomprehensible conversation of the journey to the red planet. And it is incomprehensible. And let's just think about this for a second. We're talking about the human race's survival in space. Look, if we had a, like a do-over, like a chance at a do-over, how can we avoid the social, political, environmental mistakes made on planet Earth? How will we establish law and order? What about the psychological effects of leaving this planet? And then there's the whole infrastructure thing and shelter and yeah, it's a lot. And it's gonna be exciting and I'm so thrilled to be a part of this series and I'm looking forward to you all being there. See you soon.